Apart from competing with each other for the top position, ever since day one, top K-pop management agencies have always incubated a dream to dominate the international market. Thus, it's not weird at all to see how they're now establishing multiple schemes to help K-pop grow into a leader in the international music field. One of the most obvious plans is to inject more English and Western elements into K-pop songs to attract audiences from every corner of the world. Back in time, the Koreans were more proud than ever when Psy got on the Ellen DeGeneres show after the super hit Gangnam Style, teaching Ellen and Britney Spears how to dance the signature horse riding choreography. The event made headlines in both Korea and the US. More people started to recognize K-pop and notice how this enormous music industry has been doing. Although the K-pop industry is constructed first and foremost for Korean-speaking audiences, it now serves the mission of reaching the worldwide public. As professor of linguistics Jamie Lee wrote in her research paper, Linguistic Hybridization in K-Pop, a powerful tool like English is the Easter egg that provides discursive space for South Korean youth to assert their self-identity, create new meanings, and freely show their colors on the international playground through the vast combined treasure of vocabularies. Simply put, having English to mix with Korean, or like how Korean people usually call this hybrid language, Konglish, artists and songwriters can now enjoy a massive double vocabulary library reducing stylistically constrained feelings. Moreover, since English is widely spoken around the globe, by integrating more of this language into K-pop, artists can have a wider range of communication, helping to spread their influence to every corner of the world. If you've been noticing, the English constituents in K-pop lyrics have evolved from some single random words to even an entire song. Like in Chinese 2009 Ring Ding Dong, there are just very simple English words repeated throughout the song. But nine years later, we can see that Lisa's rap in As If It's Your Last is written in full English and has a fuller meaning to it. More recently, BTS's Dynamite became one of the few songs written completely in English. Secondly, the increasing use of English in K-pop songs is also mainly down to the rhythmic purposes, which basically means that it would help give an extra melody to the song. Again, according to Jamie Lee, the second point of English existence in K-pop songs is to trigger the curiosity of English-speaking audiences. In fact, since Korean is nowhere near a popular language, filling some English phrases in the song could bring a familiar feeling to the Western locals. This, along with the catchy vibe and the fun English pronunciation of some K-pop stars, have eventually made up a combination that gradually draws the attention of many foreign listeners. Such a case could be illustrated by Twice's Cheer Up with the catchy phrase, Cheer Up Baby, repeated multiple times throughout the song. But it sounds more like the repetition of Shut Up Baby for the improper pronunciation of the girls. It's rather cute and funny, and probably one of the factors that triggered Western audiences to try listening to it. Also, many foreign fans admitted that they learned about K-pop through Big Bang, one of the first K-pop groups to attack on the world music market. In many songs of Big Bang, Fantastic Baby was the one that hooked them, because it has a lot of English scattered all over the song. The song producers are also very smart when they always add English to the most catchy parts of the song, usually the chorus, or parts that are repeated a lot. Because of this, K-pop entertainment has taken great advantage of this the whole time. They don't need to compose songs that capture Westerners' attention from start to end. They just need a selling point, which is the short, melodic, and earworm English phrase that is repeated several times, stamping into the listener's head. These English phrases are also simple, easy to sing along to, and those K-pop songs with English lines mixed to them serve just that. As you can see from reality, not just with the lyrics, K-pop also goes global through various English means. K-pop groups usually have an English name, and K-pop songs themselves always sometimes have an English version. For example, the first generation of SM was the Korean legendary HOT, whose name is actually an abbreviation of Highlight of Teenagers. Passed down to later generations, it became a trendy thing to do. In Gen 2, agencies came up with group names like Super Junior, Wonder Girls, 4Minute, Miss A, and in Gen 3 we have TWICE, BLACKPINK, BTS, NCT, Seventeen, and more. They are, one more time, short, easy to pronounce, and hard to forget. Altogether, K-pop with English has delivered a more global-friendly piece of artwork that ultimately helps them look more attractive and curiosity-provoking to non-Korean speakers, ultimately building a broader and more diverse fan base. Up till now, songwriters for K-pop groups are pretty much well aware of the international widespread of the K-pop phenomenon, and always trying to fit K-pop into the mainstream music markets where English is dominant. As a result, Fans overseas find it interesting when they listen to K-pop songs with English here and there at first, then the beat's grown on them, 
Combined with the well-choreographed dance moves that foreign audiences can rarely see in music products of artists from their home countries. Sooner or later, they'll all be a K-pop fan. As the number of foreign fans are growing, apart from using English occasionally in their songs, K-pop artists are now making English versions for many of the songs, as an advanced way to please international fans. Recently, TWICE rode the trend with two English versions for their two singles, More and More and I Can't Stop Me. Meanwhile, ITZY has also released the English versions for all their title songs, Dala Dala, Icy, Wannabe, and Not Shy. As the demand for communication with foreign audiences grows, and considering the increasing number of evidence stating that speaking English is nearly the best approach to audiences in and outside Asia, more and more idols are taking learning English very seriously. After Sai's appearance on The Ellen DeGeneres Show, more agencies started to send their artists to English tutoring classes to better prepare for the same situation. To be honest, it would be pretty awkward when appearing on an English show if you couldn't speak any English, right? Using interpreters would be the last choice since it makes the artist seem distant. However, with the increasing number of non-Korean idols nowadays, who come from various English-speaking countries like Australia, Canada, etc., the problem is very much solved. Big names in the K-pop industry are paying more attention to recruiting trainees capable of speaking fluent English. According to many industry executives, the investment in language learning is costly due to a large number of trainees, as well as the intense schedule for the sake of helping them speak English faster. Yet, at the end of the day, it is still worth it. With such approaches, obviously there will be many, or at least one member, in a group that can speak English fluently and manages to carry the others through interviews with foreigners. It's an everyday thing now seeing idols like Blackpink, Super M, NCT 127, Seventeen, and BTS in different American talk shows as part of their new promotion. In such shows, mostly one member who is confident with their English will do the talking on behalf of the group. Sometimes, stories of how an idol learns English could also be a plus point that attracts tons of fans. Take RM from BTS, for example. The reason for RM to gain so many American fans is his story of self-learning English through the famous TV series Friends. Not to mention how iconic Friends is, RM succeeded in earning admiration from the locals. Since television shows have no longer been enough for the promoting plans of big companies, they also put their idols in many other Western media, such as Elle or Teen Vogue, the English-only e-magazines, to attract locals. With such a move, having at least one artist fluent in English is also a must to work with the foreign staff at the studio. To cater to the U.S. audience at its best, English has also been used in real-time interactive platforms between idols and fans. More often than not, filling in the comment sections when idols get on VLive are requests of interfans begging for English subtitles, or sometimes even request the idols to speak in English. Though this may come across as offensive to some idols, it's quite understandable considering the fact that interfans also want to understand what the idols are sharing to interact with them. The success of Blackpink also partly comes down to this reason, considering how Rosé and Jenny are perfectly fluent in English, and always prepared to interact with foreign fans. Looking deeper into how English has become a solid tool for K-pop to gradually conquer the global music industry, the cases of BTS and Blackpink may be worth some mentioning with regards to their sales of albums and concert tickets. Take the instance of BTS's Dynamite. Although Big Hit announced the song's intention was to ease the stressful state of people as COVID-19 went out of control, we couldn't ignore its marketing purpose. Influenced by the disco genre, a very popular music genre in the US back in the 70s and 80s, the main genre of many famous bands like Boney M or ABBA, plus the Michael Jackson's inspiration, BTS has made a step further into the West with this energetic hit. Dynamite is indeed a significant threshold in BTS's career, yet it seemed contradictory to the leader's earlier announcement of not having any plan on releasing English songs. However, beyond everyone's expectation, Dynamite was a real bomb to fans, as well as a strategically smart move of Big Hit. At the end of the day, even though it may contrast with the words of RM, there's not a single thing to judge upon such a successful song with an inspiring message in the global language that mostly everyone could understand. With so many achievements BTS has soon bagged in the Western music charts, it's not strange to see Dynamite debuted at the summit of Hot 100 and brought home for BTS a Grammy Grand Award. Last year was an explosive year for Blackpink, too. On the way to expand their impacts, the girls continuously surprised fans through tons of impressive collaborations with pop icon Lady Gaga and Sour Candy, Selena Gomez and Ice Cream, and with the famous rapper Cardi B and Bet You Wanna. Collaborating with US and UK artists is also an effective way for K-pop idols to spread their influence wider. In the future, we will definitely see more spectacular collaborations between K-pop idols and international artists. 
So what do you think about the role of English in the path of conquering the world music industry of K-pop idols? Are you afraid that K-pop will lose its origins? Or do you support this path K-pop idols are taking? Let me know your thoughts by commenting down below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to Bboss TV for more interesting content. Thank you for watching.